Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? You are watching Day Nicole Designs. My name is Eileen and I am coming to you from Northern Idaho in the Hayden area, right up on the Panhandle. So if you have not seen me before, go ahead and put on there Newbie. And um, thank you so much for watching. If you're gonna be um, not on live and it is, um, uh, the uh, replay go ahead and put hashtag replay but now you are alive with me this morning it has been a fun morning I actually got to sleep in a little bit and then um, trying to decide what I was gonna do today and um, we are gonna do something super easy and special uh, one of those gifts where you can make it ahead of time and put it in your craft stash uh, good morning and for watching um, and then uh, what you can do is oh hold on my kitty's deciding to say hi <laughs> um and then you can put it in your stash and of things and when something comes up either a housewarming or a birthday good morning jeff i'm glad you're watching um then you can just pull it out package it up and personalize it if you want to a little bit more but i am super excited about this because some of the latest trends right now are doing tin cans and revamping you know things like this right here is my can that holds my um, brushes for my antique wax and um, i took some um, molds and things like that and i put uh hot glue in them and i let them set up put them on the can and then antique the can and so this is some of the things that's going on and um along with that craze there is um these are called wall pockets this one here is on um sorry about it being backwards but good morning joyce good to see ya um, this one is in my Etsy store right now, and um, it's just a little wall pocket. It's been distressed with antique wax and welcome. Um, I've been I did um, on one of uh, the lives. This was one that is actually goes in my room. This is a larger can, and um, I put some fabric on the bottom. Put a little flower arrangement, and <clears throat> then. Um, after I got some of those things, um, like this here, these are going in my room. They're just um, chalk paint antiqued, and and um, these are napkins that I just cut out and mod, uh, mod Podge on there. And then um, I kind of got one of those things where you know how you get some new, you know, what whatever's new on the internet. And so uh, I have a dear friend who makes dinner um, at our church for uh, quite a few hundred people, and I said, Hey, Kathy, do you have some tin cans? And I know that they feed in, you know, hundreds. So um, I said, well, if you have some, and she said, well, you know what, to come to think of it, we're doing uh, biscuits and gravy kind of thing. And, um, and then she said, I'll just, I'll just, you know, save you a few. I said, yeah, I only need a few. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but we'll see how it goes. So, um, couple weeks ago she had texted me and said hey they're ready all washed up ready to go and I said oh okay I'll come and get them and so I went down to um, the place and and went and picked them up and not only did she give me a few she gave me a lot like 20 some of them and I am super excited had had so much fun just starting to you know figure out what I want to do with them but let me show you um, it's part in part in this is um, we're going to be using part of the cans today but um, let me show you a little bit about how I put things together um, this right here I'm showing the, this one this one is um, one of the big cans this is what we're going to be working with and sh that's all it is just a big old tin can and um, I cut the top off of it and the bottom was already you know cut so it looks like this, so you can see through it. Um, and then I put it in a vise. My husband has a vise out in his uh, shop and we squished the bottom and I used my hammer and I pounded it so that it's down and flat. Um, it's not gonna be completely, um, I may put some Gorilla Glue or something like that to keep it completely closed, but I'm actually gonna take some denim here and, and um, close it up so that it doesn't you know and nothing comes out of the bottom 
but this is kind of you know just that new latest greatest craze i'm gonna think i might put a, a sunflower on it i'm not sure but um that is where I, my project of these cans started and then i was on the internet and i was like okay we gotta see what's going on i can't i can't not like redesign the whole can kind of thing i gotta i gotta make do something with it so I thought, well, I'll go online and see what, you know, what people are doing with the tops of the tin cans. And so today, this is what our project is going to be. We are going to take the top of the can and then we, good morning, mom. Good to see you. Um, we're going to take the top of the can and we're going to make that as our base to the sign. You can put this on a door. What about putting it on the front of your gate? You can, you know, welcome. People can come in your backyard, that kind of thing. Um, you can put it in any type of situation. And I thought this would be really cute even as a baby gift and putting the baby's name or something like that. So, you know, it's, it's the sky's the limit in that way, what you can do with these. But I just kind of wanted to show you the process and what I did. And, um, the fun part was I, I teach Bible study and the last day of, of class, we have snacks and, um, kind of potluck thing. And then we always do a craft. And so this was our craft for, um, that event. And I thought, you know what, these are so cute, fun, um, to be able to share these with you and you know what with only a few little supplies you can make your own so let's get started come along with me and um if you're watching tell me um what's your weather like i today it's a little bit cloudy here i hear that tomorrow it's going to be like 70 something so um I have a big uh, barbecue. There's 40 people coming over to my house tomorrow and we are going to cook hot dogs and uh, hamburgers and um, have a super fun time. So I'm really hoping and praying that the weather gets a little bit better so that um, and hopefully it will end up doing the the um, 70 ish. I would I would even be OK with 68. That'd be good for me. So anyway. Um, let me know what you're up to. Let me know what your weather's like. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to um, put it in the comments. And I will, um, if, if I can't get to it right away, because sometimes I get my head down in here and I'm, I'm crafting, um, I can answer them afterwards. So I go back and make sure that, that w any questions and whatnot um, that you are, are, you know, answered and things like that. So today what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how uh, I, I take the can part apart and um, if you have this, um, this is how I recommend it. And um, I've had, this is a can opener from Pampered Chef. I have had it for a very long time, um, but I still believe that they do have at least a rendition of this. So in the comments, if you have one or if you know, you can research and see what happens if you can find um, the can. But what it does is it does not cut the inside part of the can. It cuts the along the rim of the can. So it makes it so it's not sharp. And I've seen other, um, you know, with regular can openers and they take a file and they file around the top so that you don't, um, you know, if you're going to be using it for the wall pocket that you don't cut your hand. But for today, I am just going to put it on here and it takes a little bit and I just kind of back and forth and make sure that, um, I did like 10 of them or something like that. And boy, my arm was tired after that. So a few at a time would be just perfect. But you can tell when it's almost getting there that it kind of it kind of gets easier to there it is right there it kind of gets easier to um, to go around the corner and then you just go backwards and then it's off so there's a little claw clip on there and that's the other thing not only does it not make a jagged edge there's a little claw clip and you put it on there and then you just pop it up and then you can just pop off the top so. I'm going to use this as another wall pocket. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but um, this is how I'm going to start with that. Hold on here. I like to have a clean spot. <laughs> I want to make sure that I have enough room so that I can adequately craft. That's me. Okay, so Pampered Chef. Um, and like I said, I've had this probably for 10 years at least. 
Um, yeah, so you can find that. All right, so this is our base. And um, I've seen where you put um, cording around it and all different things. But today what I'm going to do is I am going to just pretty simple. And this is going to be able to sit outside. So um, you can make sure that, you know, when you give it away or whatever, you do it on your, your own, that you have all, you know, all the stuff that you can, um, the Mod Podge and things like that if you want to put it outside and things like that, that it could get wet. Um, I'm going to have um, mine in my porch and so it's covered. So I'm not super, you know, worried about that. But like I said, it's one of those. All right. So I'm going to take my trivet here. This is my $5 trivet from, um, let's see, Big Lots, I think it is. And then this is my paint can. I always have these old kind of rustic -y looking and I just fill them up with paint. But today, I'm going to flip it over so that when I put it on here, um, it doesn't get stuck in my little trivet. So that's that's one of the things. All right. So this is what I'm going to uh, put on it. This is Waverly paint and this is ivory and it's chalk paint. And um, you can do one coat because we are going to be putting something on top of it. You could do, I mean, like today... Um, I can show you this one too. This is white. White is really a nice color. So let's let's go for the white. Um, but I'm gonna just do one coat of white because when you um, when you put the, the we're gonna be covering it with a napkin. When you put that napkin down, you just want it to look a little bit, uh, you know, white. I I for this project I don't want the silver to show through. I would much rather just have white. So I'm gonna be a little bit generous, not too too generous, but I'm gonna go around the sides here. And then um, just put one coat on. And the, uh, the chalk paint dries pretty quick, but I wanted to show you, this is another tip and trick. I'm a McDonald's style person, I want it right now. <laughs> I don't want to wait to let paint dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my heat tool to it. Put my paint in. I have a little um, a little package here of baby wipes. Even though I have kids that are way older than that, I always I always have baby wipes available. So, okay, make sure that you have your hands clean because we don't want this to go on any of our project. Okay, so this is my heat tool. It's just an embossing tool. I do have a hairspray, uh, hair, not hairspray, hair dryer. There we go. And um, it's really loud, so I'm just gonna use this. So, you see, it's just gonna dry a little bit. It's matte finish, so I will know when it's dry. And just be careful. It does get a little warm. If you had a hair dryer, it does not get as, as warm. So just be careful with your fingers. But I just wanna make sure that it gets pretty dry. before is this something that I'm like oh I've already done this or is this something new that you guys have not seen before I always love teaching new things but sometimes I'm a little bit late in the in the uh, the curve of what's new so I'm just gonna put this off to the side so we can kind of get an idea of where we're going I like that. I want it, I, I need a little bit of a road map here. So, okay. All right. So now it's dried. Make sure. Yeah. So this is our base and um, you could, if you wanted to paint the back, but for time wise, I'm not going to. Um, this right here, I wanted to show you the difference. This is the ivory and this is the white. So it just depends on what type of, um, 
napkin you're going to be putting on it like this one here i did um the ivory and the napkin was um like a, almost like a, a beige color so it went really nice so just decide what you want to do as far as coordinating what colors what colors you'd like so but I'm going to do this right here. I thought this is going to be super cute. I just got these um, at the thrift store for like 79 cents, something like that. And that's one of the good things where, you know, you can get the ones that are either, oh, this is not unopened, but you can get the ones that are not, you know, you're like, well, I probably wouldn't use them to wipe my, you know, mouth or anything like that. But you sure can use them on craft projects. <laughs> so, okay, this is what we're going to be using. And for me, I... I thought, you know what, this is quite a big one. So I'm gonna actually cut this because I wanna be able to use this um, napkin multiple times. And so I'm just gonna cut out a piece here, larger than the circle, because I wanna make sure that I don't have any, um, any of the ribbing right here there's some ribbing down the side and i'm like mm, that's okay but i really would like it just to be um just to be flat so then the next thing you do these most of these napkins are two ply so they've got the the printed and then they have a um gotta get my glasses on they have a printed and then a um just a clear or, or you know non-printed side and so i just take the corner and i rip it a little bit pull it back, do a little bit of, of uh, kind of futzing around, jiggy with it kind of thing. And then um, I'm gonna peel this apart. So I got the corner here, two together, and then they just pop apart. I love it. Sometimes some of them are printed and they, they stick a little bit to that. This is garbage or you can use it to clean up whatever is good for you. So this is what's going to go on our plate here, or top of our can. So I'm going to use today, I'm going to use, this is matte Mod Podge, and I'm going to decoupage this to the top, which um, you can use, uh, there's, there's Luster. Uh, this one here, I'm just kind of going off my desk here. This one is for, uh, you can put it on glassware or cups or things like that, and it can go through the dishwasher. So it's got um, a pretty thick consistency. Um, you can water it down just a tiny bit to make it a little bit more spreadable. But I think I'm going to do the mat today. And when we did the project last, um, this yesterday, I, this worked really well. So I'm going to do that, put a little bit in the top of my um, lid here. And then my, this is what I use for um, my Mod Podge. You can see it's a little bit tattered and, and um, kind of gross, but uh, it works really well. I like the bristles that are kind of fluffy and just not um, uniform like that uh, because I want it to be a little bit of a rustic-y. There's going to be some non, you know, it's not going to go completely flat. But um, I'm just going to take the Mod Podge. I'm going to go ahead and just put a thin layer over the whole thing. And so if you want to, oh, really cool shirt. <laughs> um, this, I have to stop for a second. This is a shirt that I am just starting a new adventure. Um, it's called Sublimination. It is um, taking images and um, pressing them onto shirts that are multiple colors instead of just vinyl. And this one here, um, this is my personal one. <laughs> if you would like one, let me know. You can, you can message me in, in the, the feed there. But, um, I think it's a super fun, I did get to bleach the front of it and I was super generous on it. So next time I won't be as generous with the bleach, but, um, anyway, it worked out really fun and I was so nervous cause it's a new way of how to, to press uh, my t-shirts. And it turned out great. I was so excited. So thank you for asking. Okay. Once I got one layer on there and it's all ready to go, I am going to just put it down. Make sure that um, if you would like, you can um, you can put make it wrinkly or whatever. Um, I'm just going to put it down. I'm, I'm looking frantically, but I am going to take a piece of... Um, 
let's look here. Where is my scissors? Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna take a piece of plastic and I either do plastic or some type of a bag or whatever, and then go ahead and just use that as your, kind of your squeegee of what's going on. And I'm just gonna make sure that it gets down. And like I said, you don't wanna pull or, or too much because you want to make sure that it if you can it can tear tear but um, for me I don't want it to tear too much and then if you have in the spot here I've got a little spot here that's dried already since I was chatting about my shirt um, go ahead and just put a little bit of Mod Podge on there again make sure that um, it is stuck down pretty well There we go. And so that's probably the biggest part of, of it lifting of the rim here. Just make sure that that rim stays, stays down. Okay, so here we go. That's what it looks like. And I did kind of line it up because I, I don't want it to be like totally perfect kind of thing. Um, but because this has a grid on it, I'm gonna you know do my best to eyeball it. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna make sure that it sticks on there. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of heat here. And you wanna make sure that this part is um, is dry. You don't want to put this on and um, have it wet and then start doing other things on it and then end up having this move. So I'm gonna make sure that this is, it's pretty dry. But in the comments, tell me what what would be an idea if you had this project? Would you do a wedding? Would you do a housewarming? Um, a baby? I think that's going to be cute. Do a little baby um, welcome sign. I know um, cowgirl kind of western is really farmhouse. This right here is more of, you know, kind of the, the French country-ish. I can see this with tons of sparkle and bling. You know, the sky's the limit on that one. Okay, and I'm gonna show you, if you see here, there's a little bit of like, um, where the paint is not completely solid and I love that. It's gonna give it a little bit of a texture, um, some age to it. So um, like I said, it's kind of hard to mess up this part where if you put a little bit of paint, some, you know, that kind of thing, um, I think it's totally fine. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a paintbrush and I have a little, um, little uh, thing of water here and I'm just gonna take it just on the edge and see how it's starting to get the, the water seeping into the um, napkin. That's what I want it to do. I want that napkin to right there on the edge to be a little saturated with the water. You can wait for a second or two, make sure that it's completely there. You can use your finger Put some water on it you're welcome to do that whatever's good but i just want to make sure that i go around the whole edge there we go i think i got it all yep okay so what i'm going to do is just pull down and you see how that just right where that water is i'm just going to do that for the whole outer rim here and just peel it away. If you want to, you can take longer, the longer pieces off. But this is just one way where you don't have to cut and move and cut and all that kind of stuff. And then I just take the corners and the edges here and just fold it over with my palm, my hand. So there we go. And uh, we will later on, um, we will put more uh, 
Mod Podge on there and then you can just go ahead and just fold it over and then it seals that edge. You could cut up right to the edge. I just like to do this. This just makes it a little bit easier and you don't have to be so precision and precise, precise about it. So there we go. Here is our base. So the next thing that we're gonna do, I wanna just kinda, I, I have a little bit of sprigs and things like that. Um, and we'll, we'll get to the, the decorating part of the last but we need to have a handle on this, right? So this is my next um, tool that I super, super love here. This is called a Cropodile. It is from, um, it's Memory Keepers. Um, and this is a eyelet punch. And then this right here and right there are hole punches. And there is, I, see if we can do it. There's a blade that comes right there and it is very, very sharp and it goes through metal. So I'm gonna decide, okay, if I want this to sit like this, that, what do you guys think? Um, I'm thinking this way, I think this way. All right, so I'm gonna take the, there's two different sizes, I'm gonna take the little one and I'm just gonna take it, punch a hole in it and see how it does that, it is awesome, I love it. And I'm going to do about three fingers, which is about an inch and a half. And I'm just going to cut, uh, punch two holes just like that. They don't have to be perfect. It's okay. We're, we'll, 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 um, we'll make sure that that is, um, covered up. So don't worry about it. Okay. The next thing I want to find out is here is some fabric and we're going to be using with this what do you guys think should i do racing kind of thing i'm not sure about that one this one here is actually oh it's all i think it's called seersucker it's a it's a little bumpy i want to make sure oh yes it does it rips really well so that one and then i thought well maybe we could do something summer picnic and picnic ish and here's um some uh watermelon so what do you guys think should we should we keep it with the red and white theme or should we make it more like a picnic kind of thing I am not sure I think this is more red racing stripes so maybe not but I think I'm gonna run with this one because this rips really nice this is just a fabric I, I, um, piece of fabric that I got at a thrift store. One of, um, there's a gal that came in. I had no idea who it is, but, um, they brought in a big bag of remnants that, um, they used when they were quilting. And so I snatched it up and I have a big, huge, um, supply of just remnants and I'm not a sewer. So, um, it was perfect because I, I don't use it a lot. I more for craft projects and things like that. So um, I am just going to take uh, strips about this. That one's a little bit too awkward, but I'm going to take about maybe a thumb width and I am just going to get a couple and I'm just going to rip, rip them down the side here. And that's one good thing about this. Since I'm not a really big crafter uh, or sewer, I, I'm like, oh, huh, well, let's see. What can I do with, with non-sewing and fabric? But that is how I do it. Okay, and then go ahead and just make sure some of those big pieces, you can pull off a couple of the, the threads on the side so that, um, you know, it looks frayed and things like that. Um, I thought it was really cool. We were talking yesterday to use, um, you know, this is, these are Fisker's pinking shears. I think that would be really fun for fabrics that you can't just rip because this is, you know, this is an easy, easy or easier fabric to, to rip strips of. But, um, yeah, I was thinking, oh, well, we could, we could do a whole bunch or, or, you know, um, a few. So this is what it looks like. It's got a little bit of fray on each side. I love that. And so I'm gonna cut about uh, three inches on each one of them. So I am gonna cut 10 of them. 
And if I wanted to go back, I can um, fray the, the bottom edges. It just all depends on what you want to do. So here's two, five, six, and then we'll just go right in the middle on that one. Okay. All right, so I have 10 of these. And the reason why is we are gonna make our handle and our handle looks like this. This is just a piece of floral wire. And um, you can make it as long or as short as you want. Um, this one here, I love this one. This one I got, it's $4.99. I got it at Walmart. And I had no idea what this crazy little thing was until I started to um, kind of prepare for what's going on. So I picked it up and I'm like, what? Okay, so this is a cutter that's built in to the, uh, the wire. And all you do is take your thumb and then you, you punch it down and it cuts it. You hear it. Isn't that the coolest? I had no idea. So I'm either enlightening or, you know, now you know that I had no idea, but it was hilarious. I was like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's a wire cutter. So no pliers needed when you're using this one. So Walmart, $5. It's really good wire. So, okay, with that. All right, I'm just going to put it in a U shape. And um, what we're going to do, I just have these little beads here. I got them off of Amazon. I have had a really hard time trying to find these beads. Um, and you know, you can get them on Amazon, but this type of bead that's super nice round, you can paint these, you can um, stain them with, with uh, wax and things like that, whatever you wanna do with them. Um, my best and um, you know, place to get them is at, um, on Amazon. So if you want me to put, I'll put a link in there of where I got these. Um, but like I said, I, it's really hard to get them at the, like Michael's and things like that. I've looked at Joann's and they have little tiny ones, which are cool, but they're more for jewelry making and things like that. So I just wanted the, the larger ones. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, move this off to the side. I'm going to take my piece of wire and I'm just going to a, a knot and depending on see how that is depending on how fluffy you want these you could some of it let me show you this one here this one is double knotted so they're not as long um, so it is up to you what you'd like to do if you want it to be you know fluffy whatever that's totally fine um, I'm I'm gonna make this one fluffy just to kind of show you the differences of just a single knot to a, a double, the granny knot, I think that's what it's called. But I'm gonna do this. I, I The first time I did it, I put all the beads on there and I thought, well, I'm gonna put one in between each one. And I kid you not, it took me twice as long as just to thread one bead and then, so I'm gonna do that and save you all the double time here. And I'm just gonna make sure that they don't have to be exactly, the bows exactly straight, because it's nice to have a little bit of different texture and size in that way. I, I think when we try and make it too much like made in China, then it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't have as enough character to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and put each one there. And I believe I have on this handle here, I have seven of the, the wooden beads. And then I'm going to put eight of the uh, pieces of fabric on it. So we'll look here. We have a few more left. And then, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could just use just regular, you know, fencing wire that's a lot more um, sturdy if you wanted to. You could put just one bow on it. Um, you could do flowers. You could put um, 
different flowers down the, the handle in between the beads. Like I said, it's very customizable. And that's what I like about this project. You don't only, you know, have to do it for a wedding or whatever it is. It's, it's one of those. It can be a lot of different things. And I think that yesterday it was one of those where people were just like, oh, I'm going to put it on my front door and oh, I'm going to give it as a gift. And that's the cool part about this project. You could do summer, winter, fall, spring, whatever. Um, I think these would be really fun for Christmas presents. If you have a, a gigantic tree, these would be really cool. If you had um, things for an outside tree, I'm just looking for a larger one. There we go. That's longer. There we go. I'm going to do it on this side. Maybe I have enough. Oh, I do. I need one more. So, like I said, it it's very customizable today. Okay, last one for the handle. Just going to pull this really tight. I want to make sure that each of them, I am going to trim this one a little bit. This is kind of long. This was one of the very generous ones, I guess. And you can play around with it. Just see what you see what you would like to do. And this is super cute as a garland. <laughs> you could go forever, but okay. So now that I've got my handle done, I want to put it on. So I'm gonna take and just thread it through the holes here. Let's put it on here so you can see it. I'm just gonna thread it through each hole. How simple is that, right? I love it, it's going great. Okay, so once I put it through the hole and then I have the, the wire in the back, I'm just gonna take it and hold it with my hand and just start twisting. Twist it a few times so that it, it just, it's just gonna um, twist on itself. And then I'm just gonna put it down. If you wanted to, you could put a piece of fabric, but I can trim it here. And so, you know, if you're giving this as a gift and it is pretty, pretty um, sharp, I would just uh, take a little piece of your, um, your extra fabric, just like that. And then take your glue gun, put a daub of your, your glue, hot glue on there. And then you can just put it down there. And then, then you're completely, you're totally fine. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute. But yeah, so it it's one of those, if it's yours and you know that that's going on, I would just leave it as is. But if not, I would go ahead and just put it on there. So this is what looks like there we go i've got some flyaways i think this is super fun it's it's one of those it'll the uh the fabric will calm down a little bit as time goes on and like i said remember when we were talking about the different hole sizes and things like that it's totally fine this is all covered up you won't even know if you don't put it exactly straight it's no big deal so okay now we are ready to put on the greenery and the greenery is, um, I just went to the dollar store and I found a pack of greenery. Um, like it was a little bunch of flowers, just kind of like this right here. It was just a few. And I just started chopping off the pieces and into little sprigs. And so that's what I'm going to use. I just want it to be super simple. And um, how I'm gonna do that, this is my glue gun. It is from, I got this at Walmart. It is from Gorilla Glue. It is super nice. I love it because it has that little tiny tip at the front there. And um, it is really easy to uh, use. So I'm just gonna put them about, I would say about a finger or two width apart. And you can decide, I mean, you could not put anything on the bottom. You could put a whole arrangement or whatever you would like on there. 
like I said, this is very, very personal. You can customize it to what you would like. You can go ahead and put the pieces off to the side there so that it hangs off of the, the edge. It just all depends on what you want to do. So I'm gonna make sure that that, I'm gonna get my little finger thing. There we go. That just makes it so I don't burn my fingers. There we go. I think I'm gonna go up a little bit. I kind of want this 3D. I kind of want it to move and 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 um, when it's sitting on the door, if it if it moves in the wind, I think that'll be perfect. But make sure you put enough glue on it so that it stays down. We wouldn't want a um, you know after afterthought tragedy of of having it fall. So. The next thing I'm gonna use is, this is a flower and I took them all apart. So if you see here, there's um, here there's a, several different layers of flowers and things. I do a lot of just taking them all apart and just using a couple layers at a time. It's very cost effective, which I love. And um, then you can customize it if you wanted a couple different colors or things like that in there, you're totally welcome to do that. So I am just gonna do two of the same, so it just has a double layer on it. And then this is a little um, insert from this pack, and I just cut off the tops of their like little berries or something like that. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna use every part of this little arrangement um, in my project here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue and then I'm just gonna put it down the hole here, just like that, of the flower. So that it has a little, you know, you don't want it to just be a flower. You could put like a gem or something like that, but I want it to look a little bit more realistic. So um, I just go, and go ahead and do that. Then I'm gonna take a glob of glue here, about that much, and I'm gonna set it right on top right on top of the uh, greenery. See, there's a little bit of room and we are going to fix that because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We have two, because we used eight of them, we have two pieces of fabric left. And for me, bow tying, I, I, you, you just gotta learn it kind of thing. But if you are not a bow tier and you really want to, um, to have things look cutesy, this is the perfect bow for you. So I take the, there's, they're about the same, a little bit, one's a little bit longer, but I'm gonna take it and just fold it in half. And then I'm gonna thread this one through the top and hold on to it so it looks like that. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna tie a knot. And then magic happens, it turns into a bow. Go ahead and pull it. And then I'm just gonna start to move just like that. There's one of the bow sides, there's the other. And then I'm gonna pull these down and make sure that they, some good tails. And you can and move things around a little bit. But there is my bow. Isn't that cool? I, I fell upon that, I didn't, I, it was one of those where I'm like, I'm just gonna tie these together and see what happens. And I'm like, what? Perfect. It's a perfect bow for me. Okay, I'm gonna pull a little bit. And all I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of glue and I'm gonna put that down at the bottom. Make sure that you um, have enough glue on there that it stays. I'm getting a, an extra glue stick here. I want to make sure that I have enough glue down there so it does not come off. I'm just going to set it there and then I'm going to let it sit up for just or to set up for just a second. I want to make sure that it does not come off. And then I'm gonna put this little part of the flower right down in there so that it sticks to the base and then the flower. 
There we go. How easy and cute is that? Here we go. Okay. So here's the part where you could do whatever you would like. You could put welcome friends. You could put um, farmhouse. You could do picnic around the, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're going to be using for the sign. Um, you could use this for a, uh, you know, put a monogram of wedding kind of thing established in the year. Um, last names, you know, that kind of stuff. So it is one of those where it's very customizable. But today I'm going to do the welcome sign because I am actually, um, when I'm done here, I'm going to be giving um, dinner to a friend of mine and I want her to put this on her front door. So um, I just went and got, um, this is a Caesar a vinyl and this is just regular stick uh, vinyl and I think I actually got this at, um, I think I got it at Michael's. And uh, you can use whatever you would like. I'm just going to weed the black out of here and make sure that it is um, okay. And when, when I weed uh, regular vinyl, uh, there's two ways you could do it. I'm just doing regular way, or you could put the um, clear backing on it, the counter uh, counter tape first. But this one's pretty easy. The letters are quite thick, so I don't feel like I need to reverse weed it. But I'm just going to take my little tool here and get the middles out. Make sure that when you do weeding and things like that, that you put it away from your project so it doesn't end up in your project where it's not supposed to. We don't like rogue rogue stuff. So then the next thing I'm gonna use, this is um, just cupboard um, tape where it's, it's um, you put this on the, the bottom of like inside drawers and things like that. If you, um, if you want to make sure that, you know, let's say you moved in somewhere and you want it super nice and clean, or you don't want marks going on in your cupboards and whatnot. There's all sorts of different um, patterns and things like that, but I just get the clear. And this is, I just got this, I think at Big Lots for a few dollars a roll. So um, you can use, this is other uh, transfer tape. This is called transfer tape. Um, but this is quite sticky and sometimes because of the napkins and things like that, um, I like to use this counter um, because it just makes it so it doesn't take off the, um, the napkin here. So I want to go ahead and just peel this back. I always fold the corner first, pull, pull that off, and then just position it where you'd like it to be. Make sure it goes over your whole your whole image and then I just take my finger if you have um, the uh, tools and things like that from Cricut that you can um, squeegee and things like that you're welcome to it's not completely necessary but um, that's what I'm gonna do sorry it's backwards but this is gonna be my welcome sign here and I pull when I do this I pull back at a 45 and just make sure that um, each piece sticks down to the, the, the counter tape there. Okay, then I'm going to put it on here. And thankfully I have a line, I love that. This, this is very, very nice. Um, this one here is not completely, like the W is a little bit lower than um, the other letter. So I'm not gonna line it up completely. I'm just gonna do just just the bottom part right there. So make sure that it goes down well. And you will have, because of the um, the napkin, you might have some imperfections. You might have some wrinkles and things like that. That is totally okay on this type of a project. But just make sure that the letters get down well. And then just go ahead and peel back on the side here. I do about... Like I said, I just kind of roll it back on itself slowly so that I can um, make sure that the, the napkin doesn't tear. 
And then go ahead and make sure that it just kind of stays down. And like I said, it, there's, you can do all different colors. You can, you know, whatever is good. So the last thing I'm going to do is I know I have all the stuff on here, but the last thing I want to do is I'm going to seal this and make sure, Hey, good to see you're watching Abby. Um, I make sure that, uh, this vinyl stays on. So I'm going to take the same brush from, uh, when we put it on in the Mod Podge on, on the beginning and I'm going to go over it just right where the lettering is. You could go over the whole thing, whatever's good. If you feel like, um, you want to make sure that you seal the whole project, you're welcome to do that. But I just kind of want it right where my lettering is so that it stays on my project. And when you do it, it is going to be opaque because um, that's kind of that. I think that's just kind of the little built in to say that that it's still wet. But if you take your dryer and then you um, heat it up, it's going to get clear here. So see how it's just starting to, to go back to its original color. There we go. And for right now, that's that's going to be good enough. So it'll be a little bit um, shiny and then you'll be good. So this is how you make a top of a can sign. So all I did if you, for the recap is I took my tin can, I took off the, the top of it, just like what it looks like in the back here, put some um, Mod Podge on it with a napkin, a little bit of flowers and the handle and you are good to go with a cute fun i mean this is one of those i'm going to be super excited to give this today i think it will be a delightful surprise and um you know it is a great gift for only you know it doesn't take that long to do so if you have any questions please feel free to put in the comments have you ever done this are you um a seasoned uh, decoupage person and this is one of those projects where you're like oh okay we will you know um also if you make one of these put it in the comments i'd love to see what you guys are making so um thank you so much for hanging out with me today um if you do um want to see more projects and things like that uh, i do have a youtube channel jane nicole designs um an etsy store hey amy it's great to see you um i do have an etsy store jane nicole designs so just go ahead and 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 the nicole is n-i-c-o-l-e and um, you can just see where I'm at in my crafting journey. Um, but thank you so much for watching. And you guys have a great rest of the week. Enjoy the holiday. And thank you so much for um, just being with me today. You guys all take care and we'll see you next time.